Well, hello there, and welcome to an extra special episode of Breaking in the Habit. My name is Brother Casey Cole, and as you may have heard, Pope Francis announced that later this year there'd be a synod of bishops on young people, faith, and vocational discernment. Unfortunately, I ain't young, and I've already found my vocation, so I'm here on location at Michigan State University to get the pulse of young people today. So what is your favorite thing about the Catholic Church? The community is fantastic, like just like going to church and seeing just so many people just so in love with God. Um, it's just really uplifting. I really uh, like the fact that our priests are so engaging. They really um, uh, help children, I mean students particularly, mature in terms of Christianity. Just having that community of, of people with like-minded values and um, and just sharing in the love for, for neighbors. You know, and knowing that when you go into church and, and you're surrounded by people who will look out for you and, uh, and, and in a society where there's just so much uh, negativity going on, so much, you know, sin and, and all that, you know, it's, it's good knowing you have a solid foundation when you go to church uh, and that's the great community. If you could speak to Pope Francis, and I'm sure he's a fan of Breaking in the Habit, so I'm sure he's watching, what would you say to Pope Francis? up um profound <laughs> um well first off hi pope francis you're awesome <laughs> what i would say is um hmm. hi i'm ryan uh but good start <laughs> that'd be that'd be great if the pope knew my name that'd be amazing um my sister jackie says hi she loves you <laughs> yeah i mean of course i would ask him what the meaning of life is I would maybe ask him like what his vision for the future of the church is or what he thinks that the most important thing that um, that young people could be doing right now because like then you know that includes yourself and be kind of cool to like get advice from the Pope. I think I would just ask him what his experience has been and kind of his thoughts on the faith. So it'd be super cool to get the Pope's input on Catholicism. I would say thank you. Um, just thank you for being just a great steward of faith and uh, a great example, I think, to the rest of the world in, uh, in what it's like to be a true Catholic, a true Christian, a, a follower and believer in Christ. And, uh, and just knowing that he's just done so many great things for, for people that you know, are, are less respected and less understood in our, in our world. Um, he's really done just a phenomenal job of leading by an, an example. What do you think the biggest issue facing the church or world is today, and how do you think the church can respond to that? People really are searching for instant gratification, and they want things that are going to make them feel good in the moment, and they're not necessarily looking at how is this going to make me feel in the long run, or like what's really going to make me happy. And I feel like if we can shift our society to look more towards the long run and what's truly going to make them happy not just in that moment it would be our society would be a lot better place actually i think probably the biggest issue has to go with this topic is just like the retention and losing younger people and bringing younger people in with society and really just like that image that we have because it, you know the catholic church used to i mean it still is profound and so present all over the world but i think at least in maybe more so America than other places, that like society's taken a different view on it. And I think reestablishing it as like the center of society and telling, you know, having people embrace it, not be afraid to show that to the public and share it. I think maybe, yeah, helping people to be more proud of their faith and not so much wanting to hide it away. Um, do you have friends, I'm sure we all do, who don't believe anything, who are atheists, it's a growing population. How do you feel about that? How do you approach that? Well, I mean, like, I do have friends, obviously, who are atheists. And I mean, I can't really control what other people believe. I can't control what you believe or anyone else believes. I can only just state what I believe, stand by that, engage in a civil conversation and see where we can find common ground and I think living your faith in a way that promotes happiness and just true peace can ultimately and hopefully inspire those without faith to seek God. 
sometimes you just want to like grab them and be like no but God is great like and it's I feel like the best thing you can do is just like talk about you know going to church hang, like being with that community um like talking about your prayer life like making it seem just normal um because I feel like sometimes inside it's very hard to just like speak about your faith so I feel like if you can make that part of normal conversation it'll kind of break down some of the barriers and if they can get to know you and kind of see that you don't fit in some of the stereotypes that might have with the church that it can kind of slowly bring them to their faith or at least kind of contradict some of the wrong opinions they have. I see it all the time and it makes me really sad um, and I think it is people just they get mixed up with like the world like you know what the world says and you know what the Bible says and what God says and it's it's tough and I think also in our society like you know you're maybe not as accepted as so much as a Christian as say it was even 50 years ago and then it's kind of that going against the crowd. Um, I do struggle with that just especially like when I was in high school a lot of my friends were not Catholic or not Christian or really anything like that um, so I'd say it, it definitely I, I think like a part of me gets very sad for them just because I feel like I know like so much more now that I like I am Christian and like um, just like having the faith to like back up everything that I'm doing like my day-to-day -day life um, but I would say ultimately just like knowing that I think it makes me want to work harder I guess to show it to the world and that doesn't mean that I'm always able to do that but it definitely I think makes me strive for that. And that's a struggle. It's it's tough to uh, explain that really, and you know sometimes it's a burden to me because I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the entire church on my shoulders, and that I have to be the one to set the right example and everything. And that's a lot of pressure. But what's one thing you think the church can offer the world? I would definitely say God's love, because when you meditate on God's love, and when you research it and contemplate it, it is this wonderful, beautiful, endless thing. And I think if we live by that and we show that to everyone, then we can make the world uh, a church. The most important thing is faith. You know, without faith, I don't think you have anything in the world. A lot of people are suffering uh, in the world because of lack of faith. Uh, we have people suffering from um, uh, stress due to different issues or challenges they experience in their lives. So I think without faith we are nothing in the world. A lot of things are happening across the world. Wars, hunger, famine, all those things you find that if there is faith such things wouldn't exist. So I think the most essential aspect that the church can offer is faith. We're not here to judge and condemn but we're here to love them and we're here to help other people and that we like are really welcoming and that we want them to be a part of what we do we want to be a part of their lives too. Even if you don't believe like the community is fantastic and I feel like you come to know people through God so I feel like even if you don't believe yet like if you get to know people from church you'll start to understand why God why they love God and feel God's love in your life. There's definitely something different about each generation. So what do you think that your generation can offer the church? What, what would you want to suggest or say, this is what people aren't listening to us? I think we have a lot to offer. Um, we, we have a great perspective, um, it, especially in this world that we, that we live in, whether it's you know, technology or whether it's just, um, just understanding people who, um, who have different kind of backgrounds than us. I think that that's something that young people really bring. Uh, to the table as far as that goes. So um, I, I think there's so many young people, especially in our church, that are just so willing to go out there and, and show what we've got. There's a lot of people on fire for their faith, but I feel like we can get a lot more people. I think social media and just communication, like we've never been more connected, and that could play a big role in bringing people to the church and just other like young people like vouching for the church and sharing their experiences can help bring other people into the church. I think our generation just has this love for life, this undying intensity to live it up and to just do it up, you know. And I think that that definitely can help uh, spread the faith and show the world God's love because if we take the energy and apply it to our faith and there's no telling what we can do and how many lives we can change. So many people 
le- like leave the church at our age and like kind of having that retention is difficult and I think a lot of it has to do with like society and different things but then also really like how the church presents itself because I think when young people come and like they see it they kind of see I don't know like they see older people or they don't really understand it or they think it's not cool or not hip and I think and then but then once you get involved with student organizations like this and you hear speakers like um and different things and you learn more about it you're like oh like this is like this is cool like you can totally be a normal like 19 to 25 year old and still be catholic and not be like a hermit and you know weird i think i would just add like more outreach to younger people just because i think i don't know like here at st john's we get a lot of that outreach but i feel like when you're not on a college campus with that type of setting you don't necessarily feel like you're i guess being reached out to by the church so i think just like greater ways to like reach younger people and I don't know what that would be but some way to like just get us more involved and just like know that we're here and that like they want us to be involved and they want our opinion. Well there you have it. The young people have spoken. Well some young people from one parish in the Midwest. Not exactly the greatest sample size I know. But you know what? It's a start. A start of following the example that Pope Francis has set with us with the bishops and I think it's an example that we should all follow. We need to listen. We need to go to the periphery and we need to be open to all that the church has to offer. I hope that you will join me in continuing this process to listen to young people, to promote faith, and to promote vocational discernment.